Hi. In the last couple of videos, we've examined thoroughly second order different equations. We learned how to calculate particular solution, complementary function, under repeated real roots, distinct real roots, and complex roots. And finally, we learned how to assess uh, the convergence of dynamic stability of equilibrium. Now, we're going to apply what we learned to a very famous economic model, Samuelson Multiplier Acceleration Interaction Model. Look, this model for us is a little bit like going back to national income model, Keynesian model, and Keynesian cross. However, look, now we are adding dimension of time and we are only looking at what happens at a certain point which as you will see in a second has a lot of advantages okay so look, first thing that we do in this model is to define of course aggregated expenditures aggregated expenditures in our model given by these three equations are CT plus IT plus G Z. So aggregated expenditures is the sum of consumption. So aggregated expenditures at time T are equal to the consumption at time T, investment at time T, and government spending here given exogenously, right? We're assuming that this is the parameter of government can change. So we are not adding the time subscript. So this is our exogenous variable in this model. Okay, now because equilibrium condition is this, this is the equation we get. So basically, this is an equilibrium condition, right? It defines GP. Uh, and it says that GP must be equal to the sum of all the aggregated expenditures, consumption, investment, and government spend. Okay, and look here, except for the time subscript, we don't have anything new. Okay, let's look down now, and and here we got consumption function. Look. Here we do not introduce taxes, not ju just not to complicate things. So here income and disposable income are the same thing, right? So look, what do we see here? If I differentiate CT with respect to D, YT minus 1, I'm getting that. And look, this gamma of course, must be between 0 and 1. And this is our marginal propensity to consume. So, how much out of one additional dollar costs a household spending consumption? However, let's notice a very interesting thing here. Here, got T and here we've got T minus 1. Look, this is the first of the two ways in which Samuelson has actually introduced dynamics uh, into the Keynesian model, right? Look, now we simply assume that the customers do not spend uh, and their income contemporaneously in a way that they spend depending on their income in this period, but they spend based on their uh, on their uh, income in the previous period. Now, is this is this assumption justified? Look, when you talk about uh, comparative static models, 
like we, the ones that we did, there was no time. We were assuming we were going to equilibrium, and if something changed, we instant, instantaneously moved from one equilibrium to the other. Now, the fact that people spend part of their contemporaries income on consumption is definitely true. However, uh, however, people, when they decide how much to spend, they take into consideration their past income, their assets, and the expectations about the future income. So, even when we were using contemporaries function, we were still doing some simplification. Over here, the simplification is simply different. Here, we are simply assuming that customers and expenditures are dependent on the income one period to the past. And this, as we said, is the first way through which we introduce dynamics into the model. However, that is, there is a second way which is completely new. Look, at the beginning, when we were doing Keynesian Cross or National Income Model, we were treating investment as exogenous, right? <coughs> However, when we moved to ISLM and ISLM Key Model, we were treating investment as a function of interest rate, which makes perfect sense. However, we should also remember that when uh, companies decide whether to invest or not, so whether to purchase new capital goods, they also need to take into consideration expectations about the future, right? They can make these expectations out of, you know, various different sources of information. However, one is very uh, easy to see. is actually companies can see how much they are selling. And look, when companies produce goods, they can either sell them to the government, sell them to, the, to other companies, but primarily they are selling those goods to the uh, they are selling those goods to the household. And look, this is why we actually assume in this model that investments positively depend uh, investment positively uh, positively depend on the growth of consumption. Look, alpha that you see over here must be bigger than zero, and this is called either ax alpha is either called acceleration coefficient. Opposite. 
It means that now households of expenditures and consumption has dropped. And if it drops, it means that now there is lower demand for companies' products. What should they do? They should uh, and they should cut on their investment so they would not overproduce or will have capital that is not used in the next year. And look, why is it called accelerator? Because look at how it will work. If consumption increases, this increases GDP, right? If GDP increases, this increases consumption. If consumption increases, investment increases. But if investment increases, uh, GDP increases. When GDP increases, consumption increases. It's not happening all at the same time as we assumed previously, right? When we were just doing simple Keynesian model. It was all happening at the same time, but only within the round of income and consumption. Now, we've introduced for more elaborate interactions between the variables that you see over here. And this is why we see it as an accelerator, because increasing consumption will cause increasing investment. That in turn will lead into increasing income and in consumption further. So whatever you know, whatever is the initial source of the increase in one of these values, it will later spread out to the others and then it will affect the values that started to, at the beginning. But of course, remember that it works also in the opposite direction. If the values are starting to drop, they all start to drop simultaneously, still influencing one another. Okay, so look, now we know how this model works. Yeah, we know these basic principles, which are really easy to understand if you know the Keynesian model. Look, the only thing is this, right? Of course, and the fact that we've got time. Okay, so now let's solve this model. And of course, we need to start by finding a particular solution. However, uh, before we get there, we need to do one very important thing. We need to condense the entire information from this model into one equation. So it's uh, so we just need to go through a couple of rounds of substitutions. Let's start with the investment first, right? Investment is alpha times uh, CP minus CP minus one. And now look, I can easily substitute for those in the second equation, right? So I will have here alpha times gamma y t minus one minus gamma y t minus two, right? Because look, here we've got c t minus one, so over here we would have y t minus two. Okay, I can also take uh, the gamma out of the parentheses. And look, now we directly see that actually the level of investment depends on GDP growth, right? Just one period before. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's substitute it all together. So we've got the YT, YT, which is, okay, is equal to CT plus IT plus GT. Okay, now, I can easily substitute for CT Plus 
alpha, gamma, y, t minus 1 minus alpha, gamma, y, t minus 2. And finally, we add GC law at the very beginning. Okay, let me just rewrite this expression over here. Oh, and let's combine those two, right? Because they, they uh, represent the same expression, so we can say common part out of the parentheses, so we've got that this is 1 plus alpha gamma y t minus 1 minus alpha gamma y t minus 2 plus g c. Now, look, this is not the equation we're going to be working with. However, I wanted to keep this equation in this way for very simple reason. This equation can be easily estimated. What do I mean by that? I can take value of GP at time t and make a regression on some, let's call it alpha zero plus beta one yt minus one plus beta 2 yt minus 2 and look actually let's just say that we've estimated this equation using the appropriate method well, okay now let's start with we are just dealing this with oils look we will be able to get all those coefficients, right? And alpha zero will be our g Now, in this case, look, all we have to do is to regress GDP on a constant previous value of GDP and GDP uh, from two periods ago. And look, depending on what will be the coefficients on all these variables, so, well, on, 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 on all these lines, so we go out the two, we will get a different equation with a different properties, right? We will be able to find particular integral, a uh, particular solution, so the equilibrium value, and we will also be able to see how the economy is going back to the equilibrium level after a shock. And look, as we said before, when we have, for example, complex rules, we might have fluctuations. So business cycles. However, here we can have fluctuations, we, the ones we call oscillation, even without complex rules. So even the simple formulation is giving us a powerful information about the dynamics of GDP. Okay, but this is a subject to which we will go back a little bit later. For now, let's just focus on economics. So let's just solve this one. Okay, we are almost ready. So we will go back to it, to this one. Okay, so we've ended up with this equation. Now, what do we need to do? Well, we need to move all the variable of interest for us. All the, I'm sorry, all, all the variables, all the, uh, all the y's on the left hand side, everything else stays on the right hand side. So this is yt minus 1 minus alpha gamma yt minus 1 
plus alpha gamma y t minus 2 equals to g0. Okay, now you might say that okay, this makes sense. However, this is not the way we are working with. We should have 2 plus y t plus 2 here. This one is okay, but here we would like to have y t. And look, this is not a problem. We can just move the subscript two periods into the future, right? It will still hold. So we're going to have y t plus 2 minus alpha one, um, uh, sorry, 1 plus alpha gamma y t plus 1 plus alpha gamma y t equals to g z. And look, this equation in the form that you see over here is an equation that contains information from the entire model and is in the form that we know how to handle. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to calculate particular solution. So yp. yp is c over 1 plus a1 plus a2. In our case, this is g0 plus over 1 plus a1 uh, so this is minus okay let's calculate everything out in here so this is minus gamma plus uh, I'm sorry minus alpha gamma and then plus alpha gamma we clearly see that those two expressions here are canceling each other out and what we get is g0 over 1 minus gamma okay so look our particular solution for this model is g0 divided by 1 minus npc look this is the equilibrium in a static version of this model. If we would have a static version of this model, right, exactly the same one that we had before, so national income model of change and trust, this is otherwise, right, this is otherwise 1 over 1 minus NPC. So this is multiplier. times the level of government spending. Right, so we see definitely the similarities. But look, again, this can be thought of as, as a static equilibrium in a sense that if we are uh, 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 that we had the same situation in a static equilibrium, or now we're going to get the dynamics that can either lead us into this equilibrium, but it doesn't mean so. Okay, now. We will know and why he gives us equilibrium value. But look, yp is an equilibrium value in intertemporal sense. It means that once we are there, we are staying. However, in this context, this is also equilibrium in economic sense. What do I mean that this is equilibrium in economic sense? Well, y is equal to aggregated expenditures, right? Income is equal to the sum of consumption, investment, and government spending. Okay, so I would say that this summarizes our introduction into uh, Samuelson. Uh, multiplier acceleration principle interaction model and at this moment what we have 
is the equation we can work with and we have a particular integer. Consequently, the only one last thing to do for us is to find a complementary function and assess the dynamic properties of equilibrium. And this is going to be the topic of our next video.